Hello, this is Nathaniel Rigo. Today we're to discuss the top five obscene moments in pop culture, mainly TV episode series, not just film. Whether it's a photography store section employee addicted to a particular family, or deranged and very obsessed woman obscenely hooked on a group of high school students, there are numerous moments in film TV fictionalized or accurately depicted focused on obsessive and lustful addiction to others out of foul fixation, including stalking, eliminating the competition, so to speak, and secretly following other innocents from gender-based putridness and lust to atrocious attraction-based sadism narcissism. Which of these forms of pop culture mediums would you find most obscenely offensive obsessive? Number five, Cy Simon Parrish's Foul Family Fixation, One Hour Photo 2002, portrayed by Robin Williams, Ceased, Robust Mrs. Doubtfire, Night in the Museum, Aladdin for Gully, Everyone's Hero, Goodwill Hunting, the sneaky and sadistic narcissist in innocent clothing, so to speak, Simon Cy Paris is a general mobile stores photography clerk who works in the photo department. He secretly gives the family's adolescent son a free toy for his birthday from outside the store premises before he is fired for both the right reasons. Before long, sensing foul play in the family and determined to remedy it by exposing the father's affair with a young woman via a knife and cam at a local hotel, Parrish nearly succeeds while the police end up somehow directly ahead of him all the time. He fails to even get away with it. When the police confront and arrest Parrish on site at the hotel parking garage, and the family amends despite one of their own cheating on their spouse behind her back illegally, or so they say. Regardless that Parrish has been unable to fulfill his foul and narcissist fancy of becoming generally intertwined into the family he's been addicted to throughout the film, amid his last minute arrest, Parrish revels in his attempted act of atrocious violence and other crimes he's covertly committed through and through. It's possible that Ruby Gilman, the future sequel to the hit 2023 DreamWorks animation film Ruby Gilman might derive stalking and obsessive-themed elements from films like this to make the anticipated sequel briefly more emotional and dark than its iconic predecessor, but it's to be possibly with Ralph Fiennes and or Clancy Brown, Dr. Doolittle, The Menu, Ahsoka, SpongeBob Detroit Almost Human as the main antagonist to child offenders commonly obsessed with Sam Gilman, Ruby's adolescent brother in the sadistic secret, while hiding in plain sight. All the more reason for the First film's main villain Chelsea, aka Queen Nerissa, of the so-called evil Mer people to reform alongside her kin, and join forces with Ruby and others to save Sam from such obscenity and oppression through child endangerment. Number 4. Herbert's so-called past life as a young LGBTQ family guy. Generally in the series, old man Herbert, who secretly lives up to his nickname Herbert the Offender, is covertly obsessed with underage youths, mainly Chris. <laughs> the episode German Guy is no exception when he cares for Chris from there, most of all, after he and Peter are privately held hostage by Franz Slipknot Gutentag, a vet Nazi officer from the dark days of World War II, as well as the Holocaust. Knowing he was there at the time, while telling Lois and Peter his sorrowful story from back in his day fighting in the war, to warn them to keep Chris away from the local puppet shop owning old German and former Nazi official, there's one point in the story that depicts the Nazis believing that the young Herbert was LGBTQ per his numerous photos of youths below his age group back then. It only hides the fact that even then, he's been secretly addicted to and exploiting underage minors without them even noticing it. Of course, he does save Peter and Chris in the end by leaving the old Nazi vet to fall to his death from a minorly heighted front yard step, breaking his back fatally in the process, and allowing Herbert to cook him in the oven alive as a proper German funeral. Number 3. Quagmire's almost in prison for statutory family guy. In another episode of Family Guy titled Quagmire's Mother, the guy does the unthinkable whether he knows it or not, in which case blindly scoring a woman who turns out to be below his age group. As a result, he's immediately arrested for statutory as accurately portrayed in the episode because he's never gotten the girl's consent. During his court trial, despite the best efforts of his friends including Peter and Joe to vouch for him in vain defense from referencing inaccurately Game of Thrones for its fictionalized gender content, as much as that's shown in its hit prequel series, House of Dragons, to defining under oath a frost quagmire fruitlessly pardoned every step of the way, even when he tells his bleak story, including the fact he's been German hit ten times, which is illogical 100%, the judge sentences him to hard time behind bars, regardless of also his mother's interjection at the last minute. The following day, however, he's exonerated at the last second by the judge personally on the untimely account of his formerly Christ-revised parent, 
which does not make any sense either. If not for her, Quagmire would have been better off in jail for life, even though he did not know he was early a female youth without her legal consent, hence the gender activity off screen being accurately unconsensual, unconsented. In accordance with the law, number two, an adolescent missing, Law and Order SVU, 25th season opener of the hit NBC series Law and Order SVU is no different from the Titular or original series that has made a long-awaited and most recent comeback since 2010. Focused more on gender-based crimes for the past 24 years, fictionalized, accurately depicted, the series' 25th season opener remains no exception, in which case Captain Liz Benson, while driving her son Noah directly home from her two SVU team members' infant offspring's baptism witnesses, an endangered girl named Maddie in the front seat of her captor, in a stolen energy drink delivery van. Despite the team's best efforts to safely and fruitfully recover the poor adolescent girl, they instead recover and safely rescue another, who's also Maddie's age. The search continues for both her and her captor. In the first episode of the 25th season titled Tunnel Blind, Maddie 15 is played by Allison Elaine, the other girls played by Lini Garcia, Law & Order Organized Crime, and it guest stars most impressively Amber Sky Noyes, CW's Beauty and the Beast, Mary Giver, Blacklist, FBI, as Detective Sloan Parish. Number 1. Asian Women, Family Guy. Another episode of Family Guy by titled Airport 77, aka Airport 07, in which Peter, per his newfound redneck lifestyle, gets Quagmire unjustly reprieved of his duties as an airline pilot. And they intend to get his job back, whatever it takes, falling or resulting near deadly plane accident. However, before this, as Peter drives blindly with spray paint covering the back window of his pickup truck, he accidentally destroys Quagmire's car, releasing numerous Asian women speaking Thai, Chinese, Japanese, and running away instantly, causing him to shout out in multiple types of Asian languages. After Peter offers to drive him to the airport for him to fly a plane to Atlanta within 20 minutes, he accidentally defiles Quagmire's garage door, releasing more Asian women who are at the time e-tagged. Henceforth, it's implied that Quagmire's been secretly hoarding and harboring numerous Asian women in his place. Thanks for stopping by.